Welcome back folks. Another August day out here. Mediocre weather. I don't know. It's probably gonna rain, but about 20 degrees Celsius. Bugs are still out. My yard here, my uh, shop yard rather, is kind of messy still. The uh, inside of the shop. It's even worse, but uh, we'll make the best of it. I hope you guys are all doing well out there. Sort of the reality with me here on Sawing with Sandy is that I have a huge number of projects on the go. Some of them I'm getting finished, some I have finished, and some I'm thinking about finishing. Here's an example. Finally, almost got my wood stove fully painted. This stuff, I've been uh, shooting on the old wood stove. Hoping to get this into my house soon because the cold weather, believe it or not, even though it's August, is probably just around the corner. Got this on the go. I've been uh, doing a bunch of sawing and I'll show you what project that's about another day. I've also got these out, these uh, camp chairs, because uh, up until, oh, what day is it today? Up until Friday, I think, I was out camping for the better part of a week, and I've been, uh, yeah, been busy putting away camping gear, and you guys can see I've got scraps, because I was out cutting stickers for my sawmill. I even got my blades lined up, because I'm going to sharpen some blades shortly. Got the ladder out, because I was throwing stuff up in the loft, trying to get things cleaned up. Got the chainsaw out, because... As you can imagine, I got a lot of wood to cut, and I got fuel there because I'm out running around with all the toys I got doing stuff, and uh, I think that's about it. So, if I do nothing else today, you guys need to motivate me to clean the shop. When you put comments down below, remind me, clean the shop, because I got to do it. I sort of put it back as one of the last jobs I tend to tackle, and it's starting to bite me. It's uh, looking pretty shabby in here, but don't laugh. I'm just like you guys. I mull around from time to time and eventually I'll get it done. Anyways, what are we up to today? Well, what we're up against is kind of a fun thing and it is this. This fun thing, as you can see, is a new toy. This is an Echo model PPT2620. This is a power pruner, as Echo calls it, which most of us know it as, as a pole saw. This thing is a brand new toy to me. This is not a sponsored video. I wish it was. I wish I got this for free, but this thing was paid for with my own money. And uh, as a result, this thing is going to be a very useful tool, I hope, because it wasn't cheap. This thing, I think, well, I know what it cost. It was 800 bucks Canadian. Add on our HST, which happens to be 13%, and you've got a good chunk of change sitting here. This thing, I'm hoping, is going to eliminate some of the branches that tend to hit me in the face pretty much throughout all seasons. I've got trees galore around here, and if you guys have a look around, I take one step out of the shop and they're practically fighting me. I got that tree that landed on the shop during the uh, tornado, and well, I got these trees over here and the branches are hanging over, and if you look up there, I've got that opening, which takes me into the back 40 there, and I've got branches that are overhanging, and uh, I've always wanted something to uh, more or less bring those branches down because they do hit me in the face often. Whether it's in the springtime when they're soaking wet, whether it's in the wintertime when they're piled down with snow, it doesn't really matter, but they're always hitting me, hitting my equipment, and uh, they're a bit of a pain to cut down. Up until getting that pole pruner or power saw or what do you call that, pole saw, I was using this guy over here, and uh, forgive the junk. You guys get that out of there. The heck, I got bed rails over there. I got junk everywhere. Anyways, I was using this thing. The old handy dandy handsaw. Had that on a pole. That thing was fine and dandy for about five limbs. When you get to a limb that's any bigger than this, you pretty much hate life. And so now I've got this guy and I'm gonna put it to the test today. I have not used this. In all honesty, I just got this thing the other day. Uh, the dealership I got it from is the same dealership I bought my chainsaw from. They are a great dealership. They actually convinced me to buy an Echo instead of buying a Husqvarna. Now that was a tough sell because I like my Husqvarna chainsaws and so, well, I also like my Husqvarna blower. And so when I was looking at pole saws or power pruners, inevitably uh, I was gonna buy a Husky. That's, that's just what it was gonna be. Up until I talked to my dealer, my dealer said, you know what, these things get really good reviews. They haven't come back to us for any repairs at all. They also have a five-year warranty for residential users. That was enough to sell me. And uh, after looking at it more thoroughly, I dropped the credit card down and sure enough, it sits here before me. So 
I'm gonna put this thing to the test today. I haven't done a heck of a lot with it, to be honest with you. Uh, I literally pulled it out of the truck, well, probably a few hours ago, pulled it out of the truck and uh, brought it into the shop. And um, yeah, I cut, you see the sawdust there? I literally cut two limbs just so that when I filmed this video, I knew I could start it. Other than that, this thing's brand new. So this is a, I think, 25.4 cc power pruner. This thing has a 12 inch bar. You guys can see there, 12 inch bar on it, your basic chainsaw chain. It's got your oiler up here. This oiler is adjustable, so you can adjust how much bar oil goes onto the bar and the chain. Uh, how you're actually going to adjust the length of this thing is with this guy right over here. So I'm gonna fan dangle this with one hand. Ooh. Actually, hold on, I'm gonna put you guys down. Be right back. All right, so now that we're situated, what you're looking at is the shortest length that this pole saw can be in. What we have here is essentially a wing nut or plastic handle on a nut that you guys can loosen off and tighten. With it loosened off, that allows you to take the top part of the telescopic tube and uh, release it essentially from the bottom part. You guys release it all the way and what you end up with is a total length from the tip of the bar to the back side of the engine of 12 feet and 2 inches. If you were to go the other way and collapse it all the way down, what you're looking at from the back of the engine to the tip of the bar is 8 feet and 11 inches. Overall, this thing's about 17 and a half pounds. I think it's 17.4 pounds. So it's not light, but we have a sling that comes with it and maybe we'll just have a little look-see with it. Snug that up. So it comes with a sling. You guys can see there it is there, nothing too fancy. And you can see where it hooks on down here. One thing that I really liked about this and caused me to, well, maybe contributed to me buying it was the handle. This is quite a bit different than some of the other manufacturers. Some of the other manufacturers have their handle sort of uh, in line with the whole pole. So you got a bit of a, a wrist action going on because if you can imagine, this thing is normally in position like this, right? You're cutting things up in the air. I didn't want my wrist to always be cocked back a little bit. It might give me some problems. So when I held on to the Echo, what I really liked about it was the D handle here. It uh, gave me the position. You guys can see I can have my hand sort of, uh, you know, parallel to my legs and my body. So I kind of like that. It's not going to give me any wrist pain. Add in the strap. And I think that's one of the reasons I ended up buying this. Some other reasons I ended up buying this was more or less the construction of it. This is not plastic. This is actually some sort of a metal. Um, it, it feels very robust. This piece here, this is fiberglass. There's actually, um, there's actually uh, the moving parts within it, but having this fiberglass as opposed to like something like a tent peg quality aluminum was what I was looking for. And um, add on to that some of, the, uh, some of the top part of the saw. Some of the top part of the saw felt very robust as well. This piece, let's loosen this off here. This telescopic uh, mechanism here, there's no movement, like it feels firm. Like, you know, sometimes when you have a telescopic joint like this, you get some movement like this. I would hate to have that in a pole saw. This thing doesn't move like this. That's what I'm looking for. It also has a very smooth movement, but it doesn't feel cheap. It doesn't feel like the old, you know, Canadian tire or whatever store tent pegs that you used to buy with your tent. It feels like a professional piece of commercial quality uh, product. And that's what I'm looking for. Now, some other things I'm going to mention about this that really sort of won me over and ended up uh, making me pull out the wallet and flop down the visa was the five-year warranty. Having a five-year warranty for a residential user is huge. I'm the type of guy who likes to buy things once. I don't mind if I spend a little bit more money, but I want that thing to work in all conditions and I want it to be reliable. If I have something that I have to tinker with, well, it just becomes another job. And looking around the shop here, you guys know that I don't do too well with having too many jobs in the go at once. So I don't want my equipment breaking down on me. I want it available. I want to use it. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to polish this thing up. It's going to be used like a tool. And so having a five-year warranty just sort of reaffirms to me that this thing must be a quality product mixed with the positive feedback from the dealer. Uh, and that's what ultimately made me buy this thing. If this thing turns out to be a piece of junk, I'm going to tell you. If this thing turns out to be good, I'm going to tell you. For me, for the, at least from the start, it seems to be a really good product. Otherwise, I wouldn't have bought it. Looking at the rear end of this thing, you guys can see it's pretty much just your basic two-stroke engine. 
as I said, you're at 25.4 cc, and uh, there's nothing too fancy about it. Fuel goes here, uh, 50 to 1 ratio is what I mix. Uh, you can see the primer bulb, the choke, uh, choke nozzle, uh, what do you call that? Choke, um, what do you call that thing? Can't remember. The thing that adjusts the choke is right there, and then you can see no tools required. You can loosen off this plastic nut here. And what that's going to do is give you access to the air filter on the, you guys can see that there on the far side there. So pretty easy. Another thing I liked about this was the fact that the exhaust is fully covered. I'm not going to be burning my arm on this. If you can imagine, I'm going to have this thing pretty close to my body, right? It's probably going to be riding down around my knee. Step back there, probably somewhere down around there, maybe even up around my hip. If for whatever reason my... Uh, I don't know, a piece of my uh, outerwear falls on that or my arm touches it, I don't want it to burn me, right? So that's kind of a nice feature there. I also like the fact that the gas tank is nice and clear. I hate running out of fuel, especially on my chainsaw because the chainsaw has an auto-tune engine, this does not. But on my chainsaw, if I run out of fuel, it really throws off, the, uh, throws off the idle and all that. And yeah, I don't want to do that. So having this very uh, very clear makes it easy on me to figure out how much fuel I have left so anyways time will tell how I end up liking this thing long term what I'm gonna do today is head on outside I'm gonna show you a trail that is really overgrown and we'll put this thing to the test and hopefully by the time I'm done that I don't feel any buyers remorse and in fact I feel like I've made a good purchase because let's be honest money doesn't grow on trees I can't find the right one to cut down that has that money and so if I made a bad purchase well I'm going to be eating that 800 and some on dollars. So anyways, let's head on out. Let's see how we make out. All right, guys, we're out in the woods. You probably know exactly where we are. If you've seen other videos of mine, you guys can see this is sort of the, the swath of trees that came down that I cut up. This is where that tornado came through back at the start of June. Uh, yeah, let's get this thing fired up. As I mentioned, I've cut all of probably three minutes with this thing. So I have no idea how this is going to perform. You guys will see it firsthand. So let's get her fired up here. That's on, prime it, and choke on, I think, that's it. Pretty straightforward. And first impression, it sounds like a powerful weed eater. But it's definitely more powerful than my uh, weed eater or whatever you guys call it, line trimmer. Mine's definitely not 25 cc's. So let's throw this sling on. And I think we're good to go. So let's head on in and see what we got up against our, ourselves. I just have it on the low setting, so we're at 8 foot, what is it, 8 foot 11 inches to the tip. Uh, yeah, looking off to my left, looks like it's going to rain, so that's a good thing. Sarcasm noted. Uh, what are we going to do first? Well, I guess I'll show you the trail, what we are up against. Uh, before we get there, that's the trail we're going to go down. That trail is overgrown, and you guys can see there. I have a hard time getting my tractor down there, or anything for that matter, without having branches hit me in the face. This is also another trail that I'm going to eventually get down. This trail here is taking me down into a lowland area. This is where I had to drag a lot of trees out of. I hate going down here in the winter because some of the trees end up getting snow, having the having the branches bend onto my uh, bend onto my trail, and then ultimately hit me. So we're just gonna try to take a few of these out to start. And so first impression here, you want to get the RPMs up on this thing in order to uh, engage it into whatever branch you're cutting. So get the chain spinning, get it up to full RPM, and then start cutting. Uh, just to show you a little something here, here's a piece of hardwood. We'll just pretend we were cutting this and we'll see what we end up with. So that took nothing at all. Now keep in mind, this is not a chainsaw, this is a you know, a uh, line trimmer on steroids. This is not a chainsaw. My chainsaw would have cut that a lot faster. But if you needed to use this as a chainsaw in a pinch, well... Uh, 
throw a sharp chain on there and it won't be a problem so anyways that's the start of it let's continue down the trail and i'll show you exactly what i want to get taken care of here the big pain for me is stuff like this and i was never able to get it with my chainsaw you see that branch right there like it hangs down i could cut this off but then i'm cutting it every six months but with this pole saw you can just skim right down the tree and uh that is obviously a lot easier than doing it by hand so that's what we're going to be up against i'm going to go down this trail hopefully clear this out a little bit so that i can get the tractor down atb golf cart whatever and you don't have guys like this hitting you in the face so let's get her going <laughs> You guys saw that that worked pretty well i think for a first time pole saw user i'm uh i'm pretty much sold on that that uh yeah that really opened that trail up in not too long a time if we have a little look-see here you guys can see i got some brush to clean up but 
besides that it opened it way way better than it was so i think that uh I pretty much did the job I was looking for. So first impressions, I think I'll share with you guys. So if you're in the market for one of these, or maybe you own one, or you're looking to own one, you at least get a little bit of heads up about it. This thing isn't light, but I don't think pole saws in general are light. What really helps with this is that strap. There is a balancing point where you get the strap position just right. So here's the balancing point I'm talking about. There is a bit of a, a finesse to it to get that exactly where it balances the weight of the engine with the weight of the saw head and the, the pole itself. Once I figured that out, it seemed to work a lot easier. This handle is spot on. Echo did a really good job with this. Um, I thought initially it was gonna work really well. Now I know for certain it is gonna work well. The buttons on it, they're not overly fancy. There's a stop button. You just flick it back to the on position and pull once and it starts right up. This particular thing right here, this, uh, what's that, a sort of a trigger unlock here. It's quite large, as you guys can see. You guys see that? It's quite large. And so you can put your hand anywhere on there in order to engage the trigger. And uh, that made it really user-friendly and really easy to use. That mean the same thing? I think so. Anyways, this thing cut really, really well. I can probably give a lot of the uh, credit to a sharp chain. This thing uh, came right from the dealer like a few hours ago. <clears throat> and uh, so as a result... <sighs> darn bugs. Gosh, these bugs. August go away <sighs> anyways what was I talking about this chain it's brand new so it should be sharp but it's just like your typical chainsaw chain <sighs> Darn bugs won't leave me alone so I can take this and put it onto my sharpener just like my chainsaw chains and keep this thing razor sharp if you had a dull chain on here it's probably gonna cut pretty poorly this thing I noticed it does not have the torque that my chainsaw does however my 555 Husqvarna yeah, well, that's a, you know, almost a 60 cc chainsaw. This is 25 cc. I don't expect it to have the same torque, but it does have a good bit of gusto, enough so that I can feel it cutting through anything. You guys saw back there, I was playing around a little bit with, I don't know what that was in the ground, I think a poplar, but uh, I tried to cut a little bit of firewood with this thing and believe it or not, it cut quite well. That is probably, gotcha. That is probably the result of the sharp chain, but there was enough torque that if you need to use this thing as a chainsaw in a pinch, well, you can probably do it, but I wouldn't cut the, the winter's supply of firewood with it. Anyways, overall, very first impression, this thing feels quite sturdy. It, uh, it feels like it's going to be around for a really long time. I didn't feel any flimsiness, especially when I had it extended all the way. I didn't feel any flexing, uh, anything of that nature. It cut through everything I wanted. I also feel like um, the blade, it, uh, by blade I mean chain, it, uh, it rotates when you want it to and it doesn't when you don't want it to. When I'm starting this thing, you guys can see the, uh, the pole saw on the ground here. I do not want the chain to spin when I pull start the engine. If the chain spins, when I immediately pull start the engine, it's going to dig itself into the dirt. Therefore, what's great about this, if you leave your finger off the trigger, so come on back here. If you leave your finger off that trigger there and pull start it, the chain doesn't move. That's exactly what you want. It doesn't move the chain until you pull that trigger, which is perfect because by the time you pull the trigger, it's up around, your, uh, up around your torso and you're off the ground and you won't dig it into the dirt. So overall, my first impressions of this guy right here, the Echo PPT 2620 is a good one. I think what I'm gonna do with this thing is walk the rest of my trails because I got a heck of a lot of them out here. And I'm gonna to try to get things brushed back here. I think if there was any better tool than this, what it would be is something attached to my tractor. Now I do know they make implements that attach to the hydraulics on the front loader that allows you to lift the loader up and position the blades along the tree line in order to cut the branches back. But let's face it, those things aren't 800 bucks and they certainly aren't, uh, they certainly aren't as maneuverable as this thing. So this will do in a pinch, this will do for now, and this is gonna do for the rest of my bush because I got a lot of trails and I got a lot of work ahead of me. Guys, I appreciate you being here. If you have any questions, put it down below. Remember, I am brand new with this thing, so I have a lot of learning left to do. I'd be happy to hear from you if you've learned some tips and tricks with this or any other pole saw that'll help me. In the meantime, you guys all take care. It's a wild world out there. We'll all get through it, and I hope to see you guys next time.